Here's a problem that uh, I don't think we got to last day. I have a meter stick, which happens to be one meter long, okay? And I find that if I hang a one kilogram rock right at the zero centimeter mark, I can put that meter stick on a pivot right at the 25 centimeter mark so that I've got a quarter of the meter stick on this side and three quarters on that side. With that much information and the fact that it balanced there, it just sits there, it doesn't rotate, you should be able to calculate the mass of the meter stick. So really quick, think about how you would do that. Feel free to pause this video and uh, give yourself some time to think, okay? Um, okay, welcome back. I assume you've pushed the play button again. Um, you're going to have answers all over the board, but I can put those answers into three bins you came up with an answer that was either less than one kilogram, less than the mass of the, the rock, or equal to one kilogram, equal to the mass of the rock, or greater than one kilogram. Okay? Um, why don't you just uh, decide which of those categories your answer is in, and if you had a clicker right now, and we were really in class, how would you vote? Again, if you need to think about that a little bit more, just push pause, okay? Now, let's solve this together. Um, I know that the weight of the Earth acting on that meter stick is just the mass of the meter stick times G, where G is 9.8, let's call it 10 newtons for each kilogram. So, new goal, if I can find the weight force acting on that meter stick, I can easily find the mass, okay? Well, that weight force is a force acting on the meter stick, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw an extended free body diagram for the meter stick. And there's the 50 centimeter mark, the 25 centimeter mark, and the 75 centimeter mark. Whoops. The last 25 centimeters is not as big as the others. Okay. Now, the first force I put on any any free body diagram is the weight force, and I always put it right at the center of mass. I then ask, are there any magnets in this problem? No. So what touches the meter stick? Well, I have this string pulling, and uh, that's with the tension force, string on the meter stick. And I know from a free body diagram for the rock, that that tension in that string has to be 10 newtons. And that's going to be the same at both ends of the string, so that's going to be 10 newtons. I then also have this force, this normal force by the pivot on the meter stick. Now, once I've drawn my, uh, my extended free body diagram, I want to balance all the clockwise torque with all the counterclockwise torque. But I can't find a torque without first defining a pivot. Well, Greg, there's an obvious pivot here. You even called it a pivot. You've got the normal by the pivot on the meter stick. Well, again, this meter stick is not rotating about any point in the universe. I can pick any point to balance my torques about. I'm going to choose this point here 
Not because that's the, the place where the meter stick would rotate if it were rotating, but for a practical reason. There are two forces that I don't know, but only one of those forces that I care about. If I want to, if I want to solve for this force here, I want to eliminate this unknown force from my equations. And so I choose my pivot to be right here for math reasons, not for uh, aesthetic reasons or for uh, common usage of language reasons. I use this to eliminate an unknown, okay? And now I, I figure out which of these forces is trying to make this meter stick go clockwise and which is trying to make it go counterclockwise. Now this one is trying to make it go clockwise, so the weight of the meter stick times its lever arm, which is going to be 0.25 meters, is going to equal this force of 10 newtons times its lever arm, which is also 0.25 meters. And that's going to give me the weight of the meter stick is 10 newtons and that means the mass of the meter stick is one kilogram. Okay, so the answer is B. Now I know that some of you are shouting at the TV right now, or your computer, and saying, Greg, Greg, wait, wait. Part of that meter stick is to the right of the pivot, and parts to the left. I assure you, the Earth don't care, okay? The Earth's going to pull the same on that meter stick in the morning, in the afternoon, whether you've got it propped on a, a pivot or, or whether it's falling uh, to the ground, okay? The mass, uh, the weight force rather, is always going to be applied at that center of mass. Now, if you don't believe me, I would like to make a suggestion, okay? I would like you to redo the problem and pretend that this is two meter sticks, okay? Two meter sticks that are glued together right there. The part that's on the right and the part that's on the left, okay? Now, if you do that, then you're going to have a weight force here, the earth pulling on the right part, and you're going to have a Another weight force here, the earth pulling on the left part. And you know that the weight of the left part plus the weight of the right part has to add up to the total weight. Go ahead, work the problem again. You're going to have to solve two equations and two unknowns, but you know how to do that. You've been taught in math class how to do that. And after you go through all the pain of solving it that way, you're going to get the same answer. The mass of the meter stick is exactly one kilogram, assuming the gravity is exactly 10 newtons for each kilogram. Okay?